23rd chapter, 17th and 18th verses. It's in the Old Testament. And I'm going to talk just a little while about this verse. In the text, you'll find these words. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be on the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Amen. I want to talk with you about rejoicing anyhow. Yeah. Rejoice anyhow. Somebody say it out loud with me. Rejoice, rejoice anyhow. anyhow. Turn and look at somebody and tell them rejoice, rejoice anyhow. anyhow. Oh yeah. And this passage of scripture deals with a man that found himself suffering in the midst of his own people. Uh-huh. He's suffering now. He's suffering. I want you all to give me your attention now. Give me your attention. He's suffering. You think you know something about suffering. But when you go down into the land of uh, the cancer units, when you go down, we spend time down in uh, Winston-Salem, down there in the cancer center, you find people with cancer in various organs. Some are waiting on uh, body parts, and they have to wait for transplants, pancreas, or liver, or some other body part, lungs. So therefore, you get to speak with people who are really suffering. Not only are they suffering, but their family and the people that love them are suffering. You don't just suffer by yourself. There's a whole lot of cold-hearted folks that don't know anything. They always got a sharp tongue to lay somebody out. They're always trying to give somebody else a hard time. But you just count the days, the weeks, the months, maybe the years, and you'll find yourself in a situation where you'll need somebody before it's over. You'll never know who has to give you a cold drink of water. You can say all you want to about other people and what this one ain't like and what that one ain't like, but you'll never know. You better be kinder to one another. You better try to love one another. This person that's speaking says all through the Bible we're told we ought to thank God for everything. Or to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice anyhow. Because he's able to bring us out of circumstances. Now, they recognize that in chapter 1 of Habakkuk, he's represented as doing what uh, he suffers to be done. He allows to be done. The Jews were to be punished for their sins. And the Chaldeans were to inflict the punishment that was to come. Now, God may be using your enemy to give you H-E-R-L. Because you have given H-E-R-L, that's misspelled on purpose, to somebody else. And as you give it out, it's coming right back to you. And sometimes it's coming back through hands and people's mouths and the ways that God will bring it back because he's got a plan. He says, what you give out is coming back. So that's why we ought to try to love one another. It's difficult. Some of us are not as easy to love as we would like to think we are. Amen. Amen. Now, the prophet seems to be overwhelmed with trouble. He saw his country in desolation, and he's recovering by remembering that he had a source of joy.
that no hardship or calamity could reach. Uh -huh. Don't you know God is above and beyond everything that you could ever heard about? Amen. There is no want that God cannot satisfy. Uh -huh. There is nothing that you are in or on your way going to or through that God cannot control it. God will give you extra strength to go through what you're going through. Right. Now, I've got to say something about not only this prophet, but I've got to say something about our county. Uh -huh. We are in a county where there are some mighty good folks, Amen. good people, Amen. good people. I am the child of a coal miner. Go ahead. Coal miners know what it means to have a hard time because going down in that pit of a hole in the ground and scratching and mining coal not knowing whether or not you're going to come out to see your family I know what I'm talking about you, 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 you kiss on the way going down in the ground if you're going to get a hug you better get a hug before you go in because you might not come back out. Amen. When you come back out, you ought to help. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, on your lips. Yes, now, we've got in our school system, there is something going on in our school system. Amen. Whereby, and I'm tired as a pastor, I'm tired of watching our children, mm -hmm. good people, Children being misused Amen. over there at the school. Amen. They're being hurt and their chances are being affected by somebody that don't want your child to prosper. Amen. I'm telling the truth. Every time I preach, I know it could be my last. And I'm going to leave it on record. I don't want to go and Go and not tell somebody what I see going on. I know it to be a fact that we had years ago great athletes that got letters from colleges that never received them. Why? Because somebody decided they did not want your child to prosper. And for some school, to allow your child to go and have your bills paid, your education bill paid by playing sports. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. We've had some great athletes. I mean great. Every generation has produced some great athletes. And I'm not just talking about the people of color. I'm talking about everybody. Coal miners' kids have always been put last. Just because you don't have a BMW in your driveway. Just because you don't have some fancy car or your, you know, the wife doesn't shop at the high price store. Oh yeah. Children go to school with uh Shoes that don't have the so-called right label. They get talked down to and put down by their so-called friends. Anybody talking about you like that? That ain't your friend. That ain't your friend. You might be a friend to them, but they're not a friend to you. They're not a friend to you. Now, it says, what are you going to do? This prophet is saying, that in the midst of your calamity, he says, you got to shout anyhow, rejoice anyhow. Uh -huh. Now, what in the world are we looking at here? He says, the fig tree will not blossom. Yeah. He said, the fruit shall not be on the vine. Right. Labor of the olive shall fail. See, that's why they got their oil. They and they would sell their oil. You use oil for cooking and all of that stuff. Right. The fields shall yield no meat. That will, you can have 
fields and land, but if there's no cattle in the field, no sheep out there, no oxen, All right. that you, you, you're basically uh, doing without. Amen. This is what the prophet is saying. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. Yeah. No herd in the stalls. Uh -huh. But the prophet is saying, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. May not make sense to you because you got a mama that wakes you up every morning, make sure your breakfast on the table, make sure you got shoes on your feet, you got clothes on your back, make sure that you got enough for a bag of tater chips and some orange juice. She's taking care of you, doing a good job, and so therefore you don't know what it means to have nothing. But I'm telling you, you better prepare yourself. Because the devil's got your name. He's going to see to it that you suffer because if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you are the enemy of Satan. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, you can say, but I'm just eight years old. I don't care. The devil is your enemy. No oil, no food, no ointment, no light, no medicine. The prophet says, yet I will rejoice. Now, we've got to learn how to rejoice in the time of calamity, Man. confusion. We've got to learn how to uh, not be affected by calamities because God is able to curb calamity. Yeah. Uh -huh. One of the things that I like about you are, and you, when you read your Bible, you've got to learn to get some favorite scriptures. One of my favorite is Romans 8.28. Uh -huh. I'll share it with you, but it really belongs to me. Yes. It's mine. Yes. I claim it for myself. Yes. All things work together for good. Yes. Say it with me. All things work together for good. Say it again. All things work together for good. For them that love the Lord. Who are the called. According to his purpose. Say yes. yes. So therefore we are not as affected by calamities. I don't care what the devil serves. He, he can serve up some bitter stuff. The devil will break your heart. Break your foot. Break your neck. Break your mind. Break your spirit. He'll do everything he can to affect you. But you hold on to God's word and say all things will work together for good. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something else. While you're suffering, sometimes people have sour relationships. Go ahead. All right. You might as well go ahead and say amen. amen. You're sitting up here acting like your relationship all sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a sour or bitter relationships. And I guarantee you that everything's not always going to turn out right. Amen. It's going to be better sometime. Yeah. So you might as well learn to go ahead and, you know, toughen up uh -huh. yeah. and push forward yeah. oh. and lean on Jesus. Because yeah. sometimes you can't understand the person that you're with and the person don't want to understand you. Because it's a matter of right and wrong to them. The only right they can see is what they are putting forth. And everything else must be wrong. So what's coming out of your mouth is wrong. But I want to tell you, you got to learn to rejoice in it. How can I rejoice, brethren, when it says that oftentimes it's going to get bitter? I hold on to that and say all things going to work to my good because God is in it. All things are going to work to my good. God presides over death. God presides over suffering. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, that you may be also. He also said, my presence will go with you. And I will go with you, and I will give you rest. We ought to rejoice anyhow and enjoy the God of our salvation. Now, in the midst of my 
suffering. My wife and I, we've been going down to Winston-Salem. We've been going down and we meet other couples and we meet children. Amen. This week I met a young man, 21 years of age, and his leg was half torn off down by the calf. And so I asked him, I said, did you have a car wreck? Because I looked at his leg and it was all the muscle was exposed. Uh -huh. And you could tell it was healing, but he lost about maybe half of the muscle in his leg. He said, no. He said, I got shot. He said, I got shot. I've been in the street since I was 14 years old. And he said that I thought I could not be touched because I had a pocket full. He said, and I had the weapon ready that goes with it. He said, I was out in the street and I did not think there was a God. He said, but after I got shot and they were talking about taking my leg off. He said, I've had four surgeries on this leg, and I had bubbles uh, that came up in the veins. And he said, and I almost died several times. He said that now, he said, I don't have any doubt in my mind. He said, I used to be in the street and talking to other drug dealers. He said, and now I'm 21. He said, I feel like an old man with a whole lot of wisdom. Uh -huh. He said, but I'm 21. I told him, but you got now a whole life ahead of you that some drug dealer needs to see you and hear you uh -huh. say that there is a God who spared my life. There is a God who rules earth and heaven. There is a God that knows all about me. He sees me when I'm tired. And he sees me when I'm alert. He sees me when I'm sleeping. And he sees me when I'm awake. I want you to know that God has decided to spare your life, young man. And so therefore you need to go tell somebody. He said, well, I don't worry about it anymore. He said, because the Lord has been my keeper. Yes. He said, laying there on my sick bed, uh -huh. I had nothing to do but look up. Uh -huh. He said, when my grandma told me that I ought to go to church, yes. he, she, he said, I never wanted to go because I wanted to be a big shot with my friends. Yes. He said, but now all I got is a bed and a back to lay on it. With my leg all up in the air. He said, but I'm sure there is a God. Yeah. He said, can I tell you something, preacher? I said, yes. He said, while I was laying there, uh -huh. he said, I saw something come down from the ceiling. Yeah. He said, and I saw it come down to my body. And I saw uh, it move back up and disappear through the ceiling. Uh -huh. He said, I don't know what to call it. Uh -huh. He said, but I felt strong after it came in uh -huh. to my soul. Uh -huh. Somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. God is a great redeemer. God is a great rewarder. God is a great doctor, I'll tell you. He can fix you up when you're falling down. He'll never let your foot slip. He'll catch you when you fall. I wish I had somebody that will say yes. 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 I learned from my grandma when I was a little boy. Said, uh, she said, get down on your knees, son. And I was just a little bitty fella. She said, now lay me down to sleep. Uh, oh, I wish I had something. Like ah! Now lay me down to sleep. 
I pray to God my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And I'm thankful that she taught me that. Because while we're sleeping sometimes, you don't know whether or not you're going to wake up to see a brand new day. I thank him because he gave me a brand new day. I thank him for all the trials that I've been through. I thank him for all of the sweat that I've had to use. I thank him for all of the empty weekends. I thank him for all the suffering that I'm going through.
whatever it is that you're carrying that's preventing you from walking a little closer to God, you need to just give it to him. You don't have to be tired. You can just give it to him. Life is not easy. It's not easy. But it's worth it. It's worth it when you walk with the Lord. It's worth it. It's worth it. Somebody ought to know right now that the Lord is calling you. He's calling you. He wants you. He wants your relationship and his to be sweet. Amen. Amen. You know how it feels when you want to be with someone. And they don't want to be with you. That's the way God is saying. He said, I want to be with you. And you'll turn and walk away and go with somebody else. He said, I want you walking toward me and I'm walking toward you. He said, what a strong relationship we could have. You know who you are. Before we close out, we've got to have an altar call before we leave this building. So whatever it is that you got, that you're tired of carrying around, it could be something that you've been carrying around since you were a child. You need to give it to God and let him carry it. Because it'll make you old before your time. Oh, yes, it will. It'll, it'll show on your face. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. And it's funny how what you feel shows on your face. Amen. 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 Now, brothers and sisters, as we gather, we're going to gather. We're going to pray. Amen. Whoever comes to the altar, you can just tell Jesus about it. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell anybody. You got to tell him. Say, Lord, free my soul. Free my soul, God. Free my soul. Lord, I want to be free.